One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Z- extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's- and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're giving the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo promo code code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. Why can't every day be like this? No simple road. Yeah, no, I've been on that road too. And we're back with another edition of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind, brought to you in collaboration with Melt Premium Mushroom Chocolates. Melt. Melt Premium Mushroom Chocolates contain four grams of their sacred mushroom blend, along with some lion's mane and other fun stuff. They grow all the mushrooms in-house. They hook up all the chocolate in-house. They pack them into 10 delicious flavors. Ooh, and they are ready for you to slide into their DMs and say, hey, No Simple Road, tell me about Melt Mushrooms. What's up? What can, what do I get from that? You're going to get $20 off your first order. So follow what? them on Instagram at Melt Mushrooms, M-E-L-T-M-U-S-H-R-O-O-M-S. And here's the deal. Premium mushroom chocolate is exactly what we just said it is. It's premium mushroom chocolate. There's a lot of mushroom chocolates out there that you can get from you know where and what knows and whatever. This isn't that. This is the real deal. This is kind medicine made by our family to create space in your head between your anxiety and your calm, to give you a little extra boost, to make you feel like you're connected, like you're grounded, and like, the bullshit in the world kind of just away. melts away. Hence the name, Melt Premium Mushroom Chocolate. So we are stoked to have them follow them on Instagram at Melt Mushrooms and tell them that No Simple Road sent you. You're going to get $20 off your first bar and they will send you their menu of 10 different flavors and off you go into the wild blue yonder of mushroom chocolates. It's going to be dope. I promise. Yeah. You're going to love it. <clears throat> so here we are. It is right now uh, Monday. Monday. Um, but it is the Monday before the Monday you're going to be listening to this. And um, it is actually Monday, August 28th. And uh, we got some pretty shocking Well, the music sad world. News. The music world got some pretty shocking, sad news today. World at large. That uh, our brother James Casey graduated from this plane of existence to the next and um we're feeling it over here man yeah uh here's the deal 
I know that it's strange that like when a musician passes, it can hurt. I know that that's odd. Why? But because. Why Why do you say it's odd? Because I mean, when Jerry died, that was a huge thing. John we, Lennon, like. Because you, they're not your family. Like you, most of us didn't get to hang out with James. It's not. You know what I mean? It's not a family member or a friend. It's somebody that you saw on stage or that you followed musically and cheered for. And, and, but I don't think it hurts any less. No. Well, like we we talked about this for a moment earlier and it's these musicians and especially like James, the way they touch our heart, our soul on mm-hmm. our emotions makes them like family yes. and friends and everything it's a very deep connection when somebody touches you with their music. Absolutely, Apple. That's exactly what I was feeling and, and thinking today. It's like, I don't think it matters. Like, death is shocking and it's mm-hmm. harsh. So it doesn't matter if it's family or not. Like, sometimes when people in your family die, you don't cry or you just like, you know, you you don't even know what to say. And then there's other people, somebody tells you they die and you just like start crying like, sometimes it's just like a soul connection or you just feel it, you know, but in this specific case, at least, you know, I, I, it was shocking today to hear that news and immediately saddened my heart for his family because he's so lovable and loved by so many that I can't even imagine, um, you know, like losing someone so huge. And, and then on a personal note, like, knowing him and and getting to meet him the one time but like also enjoying his music and it just really hit me because when I first met him I was you know really emotional about him as well I don't know I I remember you saying you hugged him and you were like you feel like my family he did he reminded me of my family and like my cousins and like it just I, I felt a connection with James and then we saw that evening you know um, tab at peach and it was amazing and I just remember when when we we were about to share this interview um that we did at a peach but when we saw him come in and I walk over and offered him water and stuff because it was hot or whatever and he was just like I, I don't know why you guys want to interview me like <laughs> it was so innocent and just so sweet it was real <clears throat> it was yeah. real and I was like he was taken you? aback that anybody wanted to talk to him yeah and I was shocked because I, I was like, he's this like powerful, incredible musician who's playing with accomplished Trey, and yeah, yeah, like just whatever. Not even that, just he is amazing. And then everything else that followed after that was just, uh, you know, I, I just have a, such a heart for him. And I my heart goes out to his family and to all of the musicians that played with him and and anybody who feels this loss, sometimes people don't feel like they're just yours. They feel like they're everybody's. Yeah. yeah. And when I heard the news today, I was thinking back to doing this interview at Peach and I was like, you know what? I want to re-release it as a, as a tribute to James um, for his family and his friends and his fans to have something to be able to hear his voice and, you know, a little salve for the hurt that's out there right now i know that he's going to be sorely missed and and after talking with um natalie and and jen about him that's a those shoes are huge yeah on that stage and not going to be filled easily and and I just, I wanted to do something and I didn't know what to do. And, and this was what we had to offer. And this is, this conversation is a beautiful conversation of how strong this community is. And he tells about coming to it and being invited to play with tab, not knowing much about this community and how he got taken in with all the love he brought and the love given it's just a beautiful conversation and a great origin story for me like i think the moment that i fell in love with him as a musician was seeing him play with billy and the kids and i just remember being blown away by him and and thinking to myself 
oh my God, we got to get him on the show. Like, I want to talk to him. And, and feeling like I would, it, like he was, it was too big of a star for us to, to be mm-hmm. able to make happen. Yeah. And then fast forward, like maybe a year of me reaching out through DMs and all that stuff. And Matt from Osiris actually really? connected Matt us. Hooked yeah. It up? Matt is the one that made this happen. Wow. So thank, thank you, Matt, Matt, yeah, for, Matt. for thank helping you. us achieve a, a, a huge life goal for us um you know i'm i mean outside of this community and and the musical community like you know you go up to a random person on the street and tell them do you know who james casey is they're probably not gonna know but in this community he was a titan and uh we're gonna miss him man and everybody here at no simple road just wants to extend our 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 love and our prayers and our thoughts for his friends and his family and any of you out there that are hurting because of this. And, uh, it's just a reminder, man, that, um, you know, this life that we're living is a temporary thing and death is something that comes for all of us in time. And we need to cherish the moments that we have with the people that we love and have every experience that we can that's wonderful and beautiful and fun and fills our soul because tomorrow it could be gone and hold those people that you love close and check on your loved ones. And you know what, if you're over 50 and you're a dude, go get checked for colon cancer. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's it. I mean, I think James is a great story of, You know, if you think something's wrong, go get it checked out, too, because sometimes you just feel something's not right. You know, he was 40 years old. That's not, you know, and by those standards, you're not even getting checked out yet. You know, it's an important thing that people are aware of colon cancer and colorectal cancer and what that what what can happen and how quickly it can happen. You know, I want to say one more thing about him man. like like beyond the the music and his ability as a player meeting him was astounding you could feel this quiet power running through him that was unleashed when he stepped on the stage and there was a like a childlike shyness to him that was really cute (laughs) when we were up there talking to him and um it was, it's really admirable for somebody that is in the limelight like that to feel the way he felt about somebody wanting to talk to him, you know? And, uh, it's a, it's a big loss and no simple road wanted to be there for all of you. And, uh, this is our way of, of, um, lending a hand when cups are empty. And so we're going to take you back to the peach music fest festival in 2022 2022. in the lodge and um it was a a hot day it was it was a really hot day everybody was sweaty there was like those kind of folding chairs out we don't were folding chairs they were stacking chairs right they They, whatever they were stacking (laughs) chairs chairs. there was right (laughs) and um jay blakesburg had a booth next to in in this lodge area his exhibit. his exhibit and he was also doing um his live talk as well um and then at this point it was the four of us Aaron Apple myself and James um sitting on in the front and had a small audience and it was incredible it was like i said hot as heck and the time, like, I think in the first few minutes you can, I'm like so excited. It's really loud. So I'm sorry for my voice. <laughs> um, but like, you can kind of even hear the excitement in my voice and yeah, yeah just, yeah, I, yeah, you I were hope, shot out of a cannon. I just hope that everybody, um, you know, takes us as it is just like <laughs> cherish it. Cause this is why we're putting it back out. It's like this pearl that's hidden in these 365 episodes of no simple road and it might be one that you missed and it shouldn't be one that you missed. No. Yeah. And it's, it is a beautiful conversation. There's a lot there. It, this covers our, I mean, it's, it's like emotional, full of love and laughter. Mm-hmm. He has a way of telling the story that, that you're going to hear. It's just amazing. 
everybody, <clears throat> I I hope all of you know how much we love you. And uh, if you're hurting, we're right there with you. And um, yeah, man, just just be together as much as we can and love each other as much as possible. That's that's all we can do right now. And we love you. Let's go back to the peach and hear from James, man. This is dedicated to our brother, James Casey. You'll be missed. We love you. Sail on, brother. James. Yeah. What's wow. up, man? Man, it's, it's been... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to No Simple Road yeah. at the Peach. Thank yes. You. Wow. First and thank foremost. You. Thank you very and much. And thanks, everybody, James Casey, for joining us. This is an Let's honor. It for, man. It's Come a on. privilege. We are so... <laughs> I want to cry right now. I, 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 it's... I'm... <laughs> Well, we're, Thank we're here. you. Mel's all for Clint. We're here. here. We are. We, I think yeah. all, a lot of us are here to see a lot of things this weekend, but to see Tab take the stage tonight and do what they do whoop, whoop. and see this man do what he does and get the opportunity to sit down with you for a few moments before you guys blow that stage up is a supreme honor. Thank I'm you just, so much, James. I'm just glad to be here. Thank you all for asking me to come talk. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but let's go. I'm we don't it. know either. I'm with it. Guess, <laughs> guess what? <Look>. Cool. <laughs> now, James, man, I, I just, one of the things about No Simple Road is, and I said this yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we have been accused of being gushy and unprofessional. Yes, yeah, in the past so we have. have. So I am going to be gushy it. and unprofessional, true to No Simple Road form. <laughs> When I saw you play Red Rocks with Billy and the Kids. There's nothing else to say about that. Ah, sorry. You're crying, man. No, You're crying. I'm not going to cry. When I saw that happen, I've been seeing Grateful Dead music since I was 18 years old. I'm 50. That was the baddest shit I've ever seen. Yes. Thank you very Straight much. Straight up. Yes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you, that. The energy that was coming from you during that show came through my TV and had me floored, brother. Like, completely floored. And that's, well, it's less uncommon than I would say, but it's not very common. And I'm just curious, I know that this freak show isn't your scene. <laughs> it's not, it hasn't, but I, I do, I will say the, the love and how I've been embraced by the scene has been nothing sort of tr like amazing and, and really really impeccable uh a lot of the times when you so i've been in the quote-unquote jam band scene i guess since uh 2010 when i started playing with lettuce and soul life yeah. okay but um it always seemed a little exclusive and it always seemed like like the 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 people in the scene they don't want anybody it's not that they don't want anybody else to come in they just like they're very protective, protective of their music yeah. and, and and so when you're coming from the outside you just kind of feel like well it's cool and i love i know i see the love that y'all have for y'all but i don't you know don't necessarily know how i fit in but the second i began you know opening up within you know the trays trays um scenario like his band and he let us you know actually be ourselves that's that it's been more <laughs> you all have embraced me as opposed to you know just the saxophone player and then once this whole thing came back with 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 the grateful dead i didn't know i was, <laughs> I, was <laughs> I love it i was i was <laughs> I didn't think that the online um, situation would be such that I, I unfairly assume that Grateful Dead fans were a bit older. Uh, you know, like like that. I was like, I don't not, know. It's like they're a little older. They're not, like it's not gonna be like like when when we play and like there's no no. My social media went nuts. My social media has been nuts ever since that show. Ever since the uh, the Grateful Mahalo, and it's all been like just the love and you know the everything that I've received from Grateful Dead fans. And I'm just like, obviously Fish fans as well, but like, I, I didn't know. So thank you all for the love yeah. that you all are oh, giving yeah. out, man. <laughs> putting out yeah. there, yo, we well, really appreciate it, honestly. How, how did the Trey, for everybody that doesn't know, how did the Trey thing hook, how'd you hook up that, that whole thing? <laughs> okay. I mean, that's pretty spectacular. All right, so um, it's a, it's a, I'm going to try to make this story pretty short. No, we can take our time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we want the good version. All right, so um, like I said, I started playing with um, Lettuce and Soul Live in 2010. Um, my friend um, Sam Kenninger had to step away, so uh, I took his place for in, in those two groups. And 
we do this thing. Well, they were doing this thing at the time called Bowl Live. So at Brooklyn okay, Bowl, yeah. every like every March, they would play for two weeks straight. And um, you know, I did the first one, the second one, and my third year playing with them was 2012. There was a guest for the first weekend named Jennifer Hartswick, and I had no idea who she was. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea who she was. She had no idea who I was. And like we actually said that at the like after sound check, I was like, oh. Well, she can sing, <laughs> and then she's like, "Oh, who are you? You can play." I'm like, "Hey, we should, we should know each other. You know, that's cool." You know, it, it was she did the first week in the shows, and that was it. And I didn't think anything of it. Um, that year, I went to a Jazz Fest in April, in the end of April, beginning of May, and she just happened to be in the back of One Eye Jacks. Uh, Lettuce was playing, or like I don't even—it might have been a Dr. Claus show, or one of those, one of those associated bands. And she was in the backstage, her and Natalie, who I hadn't, oh, I didn't know oh at the my time. Gosh. And uh, I met them, and I was joking with Jennifer. I was like, "Hey, like this is gonna be the year James Casey getting gigs, because I, you know, I needed some work." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Get some, you know." She was like, "You know, I actually, I actually recommended you for something. Uh, we'll see what happens." I'm like, "Cool, great." Didn't think anything of it. Um, from this point, I left New York. I moved to Arizona with my dad and my mom just to like, like just to basically see what I was going to end up doing within this music industry because, I mean, I, it, I seemed like I was at a crossroads at the time. Was I going to do the artist route? Was I going to continue to stay in New York? Was I going to move to L.A. production? What was I going to do? Yeah. Um, then I got a phone call from some dude named Trey. Um, and uh, he left a message. I was asleep. He called. He left a message. And I listened to the message. And I went back to sleep because I don't know who Fish is. I don't know who Trey is. I've known someone hits you up and say, I have a band called Fish. Cool. Good, Whatever. Good job. Like, I don't, how old were you at this point? How old was I? Yeah. This was in 2012. So uh, 29. Okay. 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 20, I'm just trying to yeah. get the, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, to get a little bit more perspective. I come from the gospel realm, so I, I started playing drums in church when I was two or three, and gospel into R&B, into hip hop, into all of that, that's yes. where I come from, and so I didn't know anything about this stuff. Yeah. At all. Yeah. I'm with you. Like yeah, that was my background, <laughs> you're, you're too. Talking Mel's, you're talking <laughs> yeah. Mel's language right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I when, follow. Exactly. So <laughs> when they're like, yo, you want to you know, do this gig, I, I, I didn't know. I, I called up uh, Kraz. Later, once I woke up, I was like, yo, bro, some dude named Trey called me. And I don't know who this is. He's like, yo, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Hang up the phone right now. Call him back. Say yes. Whatever it is, <laughs> hang it up. Then call, and then call me back. Because we, like, like he, he got so, so excited. And I was like, okay, all, all right. I, I'll, I'll call him back. And that's, and that's, that's what happened. Wow. Wha uh, okay. Wow. So <laughs> coming from the gospel world mm -hmm. and getting on the stage with Trey, and Jen and Natalie and the whole bunch. To me, it's kind of the same, same animal. Kind of. Are you having that kind of experience up there? Because I know we're having uh, it out I here. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I would say for me, playing is always going to be a spiritual experience. Um, wherever you like, I don't want to speak to whatever anyone else speaks to themselves as spiritual, whatever you feel spiritual is for you. But for me, playing music is always going to be, it's just me, you know, between me and, you know, whatever you want to consider something bigger than you. Right. Yes. Word. So for me, that's, it, it, that's what it is for so me. So yeah, you are there. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Every time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. It's a, uh, it's kind of cool to hear the story though, man. Like, <laughs> and to see the pieces like being moved on the chessboard, mm. and you, we have no idea what's happening in our lives. A phone call changes your can life. Can change your life. Oh, th but that's the thing. I've had there's <laughs> because of what I do, and because of the way my life has gone, I can easily see how it could have gone had I not taken that phone call, or had I not done this, had I not gone here, had I not done sure. that. Like, um. This might, I mean, this is probably something that you were going to get into later, but the, the phone call that I got from um, uh, Bill Kreutzmann's camp, I could have easily just been like some dude named Bill. Again, <laughs> again, again. Some dude named Bill. Wants, like, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm in Hawaii. I get, a phone, I get a text message. Hey, you want to play some gigs in front of, like, with people? I'm like, what? 
<laughs> who, okay. who texted me this? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, but um. Talk about leveling up. Yeah, I mean, well, there, there, there are levels. But uh, no, but <laughs> but the, it's the same thing. Like I didn't know it was going to be this, and I said yes because of other people, other other people around me. They're like, yo, you might not understand this, but we understand what's going on. So maybe you should probably do this. It might be good for you overall. So when I got that phone call from Bill and his camp, I, ca I called O'Till, who I've known yeah. since the first bowl live. Right. Um, I was like, yo, bro, who's this and what's going on? He's like, <laughs> he literally, he literally, we talked for hours before I called and said yes, because I, I didn't, I don't know. But oh, wow. he, he, he we, we literally talked like for a few hours and, I, and he assured me that this is going to be something that is musically great for you like fit like it, it will it will hit you musically more than anything else because all the other shit like the 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 money the the the, the fame the any of that I, that really doesn't mean anything to me and it never has because music has been the forefront of my life since i was such, like i was a child yeah so like all this other stuff that that, that come with is beautiful but if the music doesn't hit I, it doesn't work for me right so he talking to O'Till helped me to see it in a way that it musically fit and it musically you know got me into a place of like really understanding where he was coming from which made everything work and that's why it came across that way yeah do, do you do you think that that the, the, listening to these stories now and everything i'm just curious i mean i'm sure it has but from your perspective ha, has like that you, you had a chance to like playing with trey kreutzman has it expanded the way you play absolutely Dang. absolutely um i'm a perfectionist I am a perfectionist. I strive for perfection. I strive to be the greatest I can possibly be at every single thing that I do. And you know what you can't do? For four hours on stage playing an instrument? No, you can't be perfect. You just can't. There's no oh, way to be perfect. Yeah. Especially you can't improv. be perfect. Yeah. Wow. No matter how, how, how on you are, four hours on stage, you can't be perfect. That's so, a marathon. Yeah, it's a yeah. marathon. That's a good and, perspective. Yeah, so... It, it stops the idea of perfection and revamps the idea of excellence. Oh. For me. So I'm not trying to be perfect anymore. My goal is to be excellent in where I am right now. So my idea of what was perfect in 2012 was definitely not the same as it's going to be right now. But excellence is still excellence. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. can't, going through all the health stuff, I have to change the way I play. But that doesn't mean... I won't still be as excellent as I possibly can be. That, you know? that was also something that I promised myself when we sat down with you that I was going to tell you, man, that like, just thanks for being so brave and, and candid. being vocal, vocal yeah, open. with your health wow. stuff, man. It, it's, a, it's an inspiration to see. And I know that when you do stuff like that, you hope that it does something for people out there and, and, and it in turn does something for you too. But just from me to you, thanks, man. That was super cool. Yeah, yes. I appreciate it. The thing is, I, I, there was no, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm not trying to like big, like to, to promote myself or anything at all. Like if I had no choice, I mean, if I had my choice, I wouldn't be on social media at all. I hate it. I hate the idea of it. But, but. If, if I can stop anybody else from going through this shit, like this is, this is terrible. This this like this disease is curable if you get it in time. But because our insurance situation doesn't allow uh, us to, they won't pay for it until you're 45. I'm not 45. I'm nowhere near 45. It's yeah. just what it is. So I mean, if if I can help somebody else. To not have to go through this, please, no, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell everybody. I'll tell the world how difficult it is, how shitty the 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 <laughs> being in a ho being in a hospital for a week with your insides all like sprawled out over it. That sucks. But if I can tell a story in a way that'll just help somebody else to you know go get checked, please. It, yeah. it might help you not have to go through this shit. Yeah, man. Wow. I'm with it. And wow. it's good to see you though out and playing and doing your thing. And from our perspective. The music's just even better. Like they, it's Garcia actually said it. He said, "I when I get up on stage, sometimes I feel like I'm playing for my life." Yes. 
And that, that comes through now, man. And not that it didn't before, but it's apparent because of the situation. You know what I'm saying? I had to change the way I play because I no longer have, I'm no longer the same virtuosic player that I was two years ago because I've had to literally take like every, like, okay, this is a little bit more candid than you all know, but I'm going through chemo right now. So it's a two week chemo every other week. So for four days, four to five days out of every two weeks, I'm just lying in the bed. There's nothing I can do. There's no, I can't, continue to improve i can't continue so basically what i'm doing is every every two weeks i'm trying to get back to oh being where i'm okay up your baseline yeah i'm yeah. Trying, like this the goal is to get back to the baseline so hopefully what's today today is saturday yeah saturday, saturday. so i gotta play today tonight i'm playing on monday and then i start back up on tuesday wow you're a warrior, man. Well, that's that's for real. No, it, look. It, what, what, whether you want to be or not, realize it or not, you're, especially in this scene, your vulnerability in your playing and then in your personal life, this is why you're feeling the love. Allowing everybody to see who you are, what you are, that is why we come back. That's why we cheer. That's why we're screaming your name and wanting you to do better and go because like your life is spread out in front of us. And we're like, we want, we want to preserve that life. So we're giving that love and that energy for you to like get better. Come on, let's do it. I hear what you're saying about social, right? Like, <laughs> I, I have the same sentiments about social media too, but there's a flip side to everything, right? The yin and the yang, and the beautiful positive side of social media is exactly what's happening right now. We didn't know you from anyone in the world, and then you dropped into our world, and now we get to do this in front of everybody. And th make no mistake, this will bless somebody. This talk, this experience, they're gonna take it back with their peach four day and be like, we saw James Casey, he was talking about his stuff, I got checked, whatever, we don't know. We don't know what can happen. No. So just the fact that you're showing up in your excellence, I just wanna thank you for that. Yeah, man. And thank you. Thank and, you. and here's thank one you. other piece of this too, man, because I know we gotta go in a second, but when we started doing No Simple Road and talking to the artists that we love and admire, something started happening for the three of us where our musical experience started to change because we were now rooting for our friends. For the individual. Right? And the connection to the music and the people created something larger than it was by itself. And I wanted to bring that to the people that listen to the show because it had so fundamentally changed my experience that I was like, how can I share this with the people that are listening to what we do? And you have given us that opportunity today because I know now that the people that are in this room are going to have an even deeper experience tonight seeing Trey than they would have do otherwise. Absolutely. So just thanks for helping us spread that. Spread that. I thank you all for spreading it because yeah. honestly, you all are doing, you're doing, you're, you all do a job that we can't do. This is a documentation job. Yes. You all document what we're doing and <laughs> We, what, what happens like late, late, what's gonna happen like when we're older, we're gonna write a memoir and we're gonna mess up and we're gonna tell <laughs> stories wrong and we don't remember anything. And then y'all be like, well, you know, it didn't really happen like that. You told us back then. Like, so I, we appreciate what you all do more than you know. And we check you out. We, we listen because I mean, this informs, we, if you're a musician still, like if you get to the point that you're still a musician, you were a music nerd at some point. That, yeah, so we, we didn't have podcasts as kids, so yeah. like all that's information. We we love this stuff. So please, like, thank you for doing what you do, Aww. and please continue to do what you're doing. Oh, thank you, hey, that's, James. That's sweet. We appreciate that outlook because I've never heard it like that before from from the musician side. I know that they appreciate that it. Good. They love the conversations. We have a great time, but to hear it from that perspective, it's it's fresh. And so thank you for that. What a salute. I think I think one thing. This is the last word. Also, the one thing I, that this world needs is truth, honesty, and good music. And that's what 
James is all about, and yeah. that's what we're all about, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. James, Aww. thank you, man. Thank, thank you. Thank you so me. much, and I'm so excited to see you in person tonight for absolutely. the first yes. time. Oh yeah, the oh, first time, time in person. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah, you yeah, so yeah. much. Absolutely. <laughs> huh? I don't know. I we don't. Oh, you all know we don't have set lists. Uh, we've we, we've told y'all that there's no set list for a trade show. I literally have no clue. He's like, what come we're on, play. James, you can tell it's us. It's gonna be a surprise to you and me and everybody else. Yeah. So we're gonna share a surprise together. That's what's so great Yay. about this. Yes. Everybody watching at home, thanks for watching. James man. We Casey, love you. Guys, everybody. Let's hear it for James Casey. Thank you. Hey, what's up? This is Blake Wyland. I'm the host of the Tone Mob podcast. It's a show where I interview guitar people about guitar stuff. We talk about their pedals, their amps, their accessories, their preferences, all that stuff, as well as a healthy dose of whatever comes up. Topics have ranged from aliens to addiction and anywhere in between. Oh yeah, and pizza. We're definitely going to be talking about pizza. So get the show wherever you're listening to this podcast at. Just search The Tone Mob in your search bar and it will pop right up. Come join us. We're having a lot of fun. Thanks for checking it out.